So, moving forward, mm-hmm. you know, military set you up to get back to the gym full time. You got your, you got your brand, and then what? Then so, what point did you go ahead and start going for your license? Right, give me a training. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Okay. Personal training. Yeah, personal training. Training. Yeah. yeah. So that kind of that fell in suit with the uh, kind of with the military as well. So my first certification was actually through them where I got my, uh, I became a master fitness trainer through the military. And then also based off of this new PT test, the military has, Mm -hmm. they developed a curriculum, um, the APFT, and it was more like strength based. So they brought in like strength and conditioning coaches and certified us as graders and testers for that. So we got to work hand in hand with these strength and conditioning coaches that, you know, were on college football teams and stuff like that. And they were able to like really guide us uh, through that. So I gained a lot of knowledge first and foremost through the military and through my experience with that. And that's what led to me, you know, getting my uh, NASM, um, National Academy of Sports Medicine uh, certification and uh, personal training. Okay. I was gonna do the master fitness trainer mm-hmm. course. That's actually what I signed up for. Um, but mm-hmm. it just, once I got the certification and once I started getting that actual experience, mm-hmm. it was like, at the end of the day, there's nothing that a certification is going to do. Having more certifications is going to do for me because <laughs> right. I, I, like, I'm experienced, you know. Right. And everything that I had, had pretty much gained at that point was a lot more experience. And I found a lot more, um, I just found that a lot more important at the time. Okay. So what was your goal as a trainer? I know this sounds pretty simple, I mean. But what was your actual goal as a trainer? Because I want to I wanna stick on that too. You have... A lot of people who go out here, they want to find a trainer. They don't know what type of trainer to find. They don't know how to identify a good trainer versus a bad one. And so I want I want to stick on this for a second. So what was your initial goal when you first became a, your very, you had your very first client, you got your building, you know what I mean? So what, what was your initial goal for yourself then? Cause I'm pretty sure the goals have changed now. So what was your initial goal then? Um, when you came in as a trainer. It was honestly the same that it was then as it is now. And ultimately, that was to change lives, mm-hmm. you know, because, you know, when I started working with those individuals, those PT failures, you know, within my military union, I started seeing, like, how much of an impact it had, you know, me just changing their life from a physical standpoint, you know, it really pushed me to want to keep that going with other individuals. So, mm-hmm. at, you know, when it came to personal training, that was my driving force. I didn't want people to get in the position that I was in. I didn't, I I knew what it felt like. So I, you know, tried my best to help others, you know, kind of get out of that, you know, cause I, at the the end of the day, I've been there. So it was like been there, done that, you know, I know what changing my physical was able to do for my mental and spiritual. Mm -hmm. So, you know, really just being able to help others do that same thing. So let's, let's stay, let's 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 stay stay right there for a second. So working out or getting fit it's more it's 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 not all about just changing the out appearance it's also changing what's inside and your mental so explain that a little bit how all that how all that goes together yeah so i mean at first i'm not gonna lie like me working out and doing all that it was a lot of ego you know it was just for the sole fact that i just want to look good i just want to have a six pack you know all that because i thought that that's what women wanted you know right, what I mean? But, I mean, yeah, to a certain extent, a like, thing, that yeah. is, but, Part like, you know, it, it's a lot more than just what you look like, yeah. you know, it, it's more mental. Um, but, you know, then within that, you know, as I just, you know, kept evolving, you know, I started just to learn more, like, that if I took the same aspects that I was using and applying to fitness and working mm-hmm. out, you know, such as the discipline of going in every day, even on the days yeah. I didn't want to, staying consistent with it, you know. Um, and if I had translated those same principles and characteristics, you know, over to other areas of my life, you know, I would thrive just the same. So that's kind of the natural equation I put together. And then that's when it started getting, I started getting more in tune with my, you know, mental, you know, reading books like David Goggins and stuff like, you familiar with David Goggins? No. Yeah, well, he, he's Marine, Hell of a dude. He actually inspired me to freaking go out with absolutely no training and run a mini marathon. 
is 13.1 miles with absolutely no training. He did 100 miles. So in my head, I was like, shoot, he did 100 miles. I can do 13.1 miles. Um, and it did one and been done. Yeah. No, nah, it, it was definitely, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I definitely wouldn't recommend that if you're going to do that, I would highly <laughs> get some type of training because my, my hips were, you know, tore up following that. Um, but let me know. So when, you, when you're training, you, you have your first success story, right? Uh, without giving a name, you know, I'm not sure that person even cares if you would mention it. But what was your very first success story that gave you the motivation to say, you know what, it's time to expand this and it's time to get more people. It's time to get uh, maybe another building. What was that very first experience? Yeah, I ain't gonna, I'm not, I'm definitely not gonna put his name out there, but it was actually, you know, again, going back to the military and it was this, this younger kid. He was probably, I mean, he wasn't, he was probably about two years younger than me. Um, but he, he kind of looked up to me, you know, and he was kind of seen as like, a you know, a black horse of the unit. Like, you know, people kind of give him shit because he was a smaller dude, all this and that. And obviously he was a PT failure. And in the military, when you a PT failure, like they just down you, make you feel so bad about yourself that it's not even funny. Um, so when I started working with him and just, and just started seeing like how much, you know, he was just getting excited, you know, and how much after he was able to pass his PT test, how that just changed the whole course of his career. Like he became a better soldier for the sole fact that he took time to, you know, get his fitness better and get in shape and be able to pass that PT test. So just being able to see how much of an impact I had on him outside of fitness, that's what really inspired me to do this because I'm like, I want to be able to make millions of people feel this way. I want to be able to make as many people as I possibly can feel the exact way that he did, but not even just in the aspect of fitness, but just seeing what fitness could, you know, do to serve as a foundation to take him on elsewhere in life. So when it comes to training, is there a particular type of trainer people need to look, you know, need to look for? And let's say if a person just wants to gain muscle, or a person just wants to get some cardio in and, and get some, you know, and, and tone up, or is there a particular trainer people need to look for, or you can just, or they pretty much all supposed to be able to train, no matter what, depend on the, you know, what the person's looking for to the goal to achieve. So it, it's, I think it ultimately it's really what the individual is looking for because there's so many different training styles, you know what I mean? Like you got strength training, um, which that that's what was my bread and butter. You know, it helped me convert over fat into muscle, what seemed to be the quickest way, you know, and most people think that the quickest way to, you know, lose fat is just doing cardio, but nah, you gotta, you gotta get under some weights, you gotta lift some heavy stuff, you gotta gain some lean muscle mass, because the more lean muscle mass you have, you're naturally gonna burn more, you know, fat on a regular basis. You're gonna burn more calories on a regular basis, I'm saying, not fat. Um, but like for me, I kinda, I kinda put it all together. You know, like I started with functional fitness. Uh, I mean, I started with strength training and then I more or less kinda started transitioning over to like functional fitness, you know, and being uh, um, kind of learning a little bit more about the the seven fundamental primal, uh, primal movements, seven primal movements, lunges, hinges, squats, all that. Um, so all yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, that ain't that's not one. The no. hinge, the hinge getting into that pushing <laughs> is a primal movement. But um, more or less, just kind of taking you know strength training, muscular endurance, you know hypertrophy, mm. functional mobility agility, all of that, putting it all together in one, that essentially, you know, it's like that, I call it train like an athlete, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I think that everybody, you know, even regular civilians, like we all have the inner athlete within us. And all, when you think of an athlete, all an athlete truly is, is somebody who's strong, somebody who's mobile, somebody who's agile, somebody who's fast, you know what I mean? And those are all characteristics that at the end of the day, uh, we can carry and we can possess and so you know, I just want to make it Broader like I kind of cover the broader spectrum, which is functional fitness But you know, there are people who have specific needs because you got you got you know, there's a lot of trainers out there mm -hmm. Right, so how do you identify when you have a Good trainer or a bad trainer like because most some people maybe not even know they may not know they're not getting anything out of what they're doing so how do you identify if I got the right trainer or not? 
So first and foremost, I think the one of the most important things is having that interpersonal, you know, relationship or connection. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, when you're, it shouldn't, you shouldn't go in and train with somebody and they just on their phone, they ain't talking to you or they just got to work out on a board for you to do and you don't even really have any type of human contact. Um, but then also second is results. Mm -hmm. And, you know, whether those results are, you know, physical, mental, or spiritual, like there, there, there has to be some type of results, especially if you're training with people, you know, for an extended amount of time. Uh, but, you know, I would really say that those are kind of like the two biggest factors for me is, mm -hmm. you know, being able to actually create that interpersonal relationship, being able to create that bond and also being able to fluently, you know, um, produce results yeah. and have some way of showing that rather yeah. that's, um, I actually had this conversation the other day with one of my buddies who's a trainer and, you know, one of his ways of, you know, showing the results is mm -hmm. doing, you know, transformation pictures, you know, opposed to me, right. like. I like to, I like testimonies. I like people to be able to tell their story. I like to be able to share that. So whatever method you do, there's no right or wrong, but you've got to be able to show that you're producing results in order to be able to, you know, build up that clientele. The Taj Lanjano Show.